Well, the Mars Science Laboratory, the rover's Curiosity, it's called a laboratory for a reason. It has a full set of instruments on board that can tell us all about the rocks that we're going to encounter with that rover. Now, one, if you pull up the first slide, please. One of the key questions that we are looking for, one of the key questions we're asking is, where are the organic molecules? Now, why would we search for organic molecules on Mars? We're, we're seeking signs of life on a planet that's very close to home, and that at one point uh, during the evolution of the solar system, we think that it might have been habitable in terms of being close enough to the sun to receive enough energy to be warm enough for life to exist there. Okay, the atmosphere was very different and there was probably water on Mars. We've already covered that a lot um, with some of the other presentations. Now, organic molecules can be both nutrients for organisms, but they can also be parts of the organisms. They might be waste products of organisms. In either way, organic molecules are a fundamental part of understanding whether or not the environments that we look at in Mars might have been habitable, meaning they either supported life or um, they could have supported life. Next uh, slide, please. Now, on Earth, we find organic molecules throughout the geological rock record. Here's an example of a rock that is billions of years old. And in this, we find evidence of microorganisms. And we find that evidence in terms of both the organic molecules that are present, but also in terms of the a package of chemistry and features that we see in the rocks. Some of those features might even be things that look like microorganisms, things that you might find under a, a microscope. Next slide, please. Here's an example of how we would find such a molecule. Take an example of a polar bear. We're all familiar with polar bears. They live in the Arctic. Um, you don't want to encounter one at close range. When it dies, it's going to leave behind a fossil skeleton. And we might find that fossil skeleton in the rock record. Well, in a similar way, microorganisms have all sorts of organic molecules that make up their cells. And some of those, in particular, would be lipids that make up the membrane. The membrane is the outer portion of, of the cell, or it makes up the, the walls of the nucleus and other uh, organelles inside the cell. Those lipids are complex molecules. They have carbon-carbon bonds. And in this image that I'm showing you, Every line represents a carbon-carbon bond. Okay, so this is a big molecule, and it has all sorts of um, oxygens hanging off of it. It might have phosphorus, it might have sulfur, nitrogens. It can be kind of complex. Well, that molecule will get put into the rock record when the microorganism dies. And under certain conditions, that carbon-carbon structure can get preserved, even for billions of years. And we can uncover that type of molecule, and we call that a molecular fossil. So when we go to Mars with Curiosity, we're taking with us an instrument that can actually look for organic molecules. It is capable of detecting a, a fossil, a molecular fossil that we might anticipate from an organism as small as a microorganism. And we're going to look for those. So next slide. And we're going to look for those in the ancient rock record. Now, this is an image. It's an artist's rendition of the Meridiani area. Uh, and it shows water in the crater there. This was, uh, this was taken from a website called Space for Case. So you can find it on the web at www.spaceforcase.com. And uh, what's interesting about it is that it kind of presents an, this idea, this, this creative conception of what it might have been like years, millions of years ago on Mars. And these are the types of environments. Here, a crater filled with water, places where all the other elements of habitability are essential, source of water, possible sources of energy, maybe organic molecules. These are the things that we're looking for. This is what makes up a habit habitable uh, place. And we're looking for the rock record that represents uh, an environment like this. These are the types of places that we might actually succeed in finding organic molecules. And this is what uh, John was talking about with the different landing sites. All of them kind of fulfill these, uh, this niche. What we're hoping to do is find those organic molecules. Next slide. And those organic molecules could tell us a variety of things. One is they can tell us about different sources. Those sources might be uh, meteorite sources. 
They could be geological, the actual processes that happen by a planet can produce organic molecules. And perhaps they're coming from life. We don't know yet. So we have three categories of sources. But then on top of that, all of those organic molecules go through other types of processes. And sometimes they, they keep a record of those processes. They might tell you about surface processes, things that have happened since they were originally formed. We're going to try and unresolve what those molecules actually say if we find them. This is an image here of uh, the Mars uh, Science Laboratory rover, Curiosity. And it's actually, um, you can see the beam, of the laser beam pointing off of it. That's the ChemCam instrument zapping a rock. And what it's going to do is it's going to look, it's a way, it's a tool that we're using to survey the types of uh, elements that are in those rocks. We're going to be looking for variations in those elements. We're also going to be looking at features of the rocks. They can tell us different things about the energy of the environment that formed the rocks in the first place. They can tell us all sorts of things about what the chemistry of that environment was like, what to have expected. Was it a lake? Was it a delta? Was it a river channel? We don't know, but we'll be able to figure those types of things out. All of that information becomes the context for understanding the other features that we see, which could include organic molecules. We need to have that full package of information in order to address the questions of habitability. To actually seek signs of life requires more than just organic molecules. It requires a whole package of chemistry and morphologies and structures of the rocks. We're going to be able to do that. So after zapping the rocks with the ChemCam laser and taking pictures and everything, we'll go up to a rock, we can drill it, and we can put that into the SAM instrument, which is in the belly of the rover, and that instrument allows us to look for organic molecules. It has what's called a gas chromatograph mass spectrometer. And we'll be able to separate out the different molecules and see what's there. The discovery of an organic molecule on Mars will be a big deal. Right now, we don't have any evidence of organic molecules on Mars itself. There is suggestions from meteorites that maybe organic molecules are there. So finding organic molecule all on its own is a big discovery. Whether, if we don't find organic molecules on Mars, it's not a full loss. If you think about every single Mars mission that we have had, every single one has completely changed our perspective of the red planet. We have always discovered something. And this time around, we're going with a whole laboratory of instruments. We're going to be looking at these rocks in a way we've never been able to look at them before. And because of that, we're going to be discovering new things. And all of those ideas that have been presented about what we think happened on Mars, they're going to change. They're going to evolve into something new. And nobody can predict what that is yet. But we're, our perception of Mars will change, and we are going to have some discoveries. Thank you very much. Um, we, we have time for a few questions, and while we're waiting for people to come up, uh, the word of the day is alluvial.